today's episode, uh, we will, uh, on today's episode of uh, the Central Bank Weekly, we will be taking you through the uh, the e Naira hackathon event, which uh, provided engagement from talented, young, and innovative Nigerians in the financial technology industry, propelled by the Central Bank of Nigeria. According to the Central Bank Governor Godwin Emefile, the digital currency, the e Naira, was developed to provide Nigerians with a cheap, safe, and trusted means of payment, unlike the offline payment channels like agent networks, uh, USSD, wearable cards, and near field communication technology. The e Naira will give access to financial services to the underserved and unbanked segments of the population, as well as enhance efficiency uh, in the market. Let's as the world gradually transitions from analog to digitized economies, central banks in all jurisdictions have been preoccupied with simplifying and cementing electronic payment platforms. Economic experts and tech enthusiasts have repeatedly urged Nigerian leaders to harness the energy enthusiasm and creativity of the country's youths who make up the majority of over 200 million population to drive the digital economy projects. In this context, the Central Bank of Nigeria, in technical collaboration with Bit Inc., launched the ENERA on October 25, 2021, becoming the first African country and the sixth in the world to do so. According to the CBN Governor Godwin Emiefile, the launch of the ENERA was timely and strategic in complementing the federal government's various diversification and digitization initiatives, such as the launch of the Nigeria Digital Economy Policy and Strategy, the National Broadband Strategy, and the introduction of the Startup Bill, amongst others. The hackathon is an initiative that creates a collaborative environment for experts with diverse set of skills to drive sustained innovation geared towards making the e-Naira the principle for digital financial services and the gateway to the digital economy. It is intended to seek solutions that will drive financial inclusion, SME's growth, and the creation of startups facilitate cross-border trades and transfers, as well as international remittances and FX exchanges effective implementation of welfare-inclined government programs and enhance efficiency in our interbank payment market. Therefore, today's event is targeted at providing an engagement with critical stakeholders in the financial technology space, space to deepen the link between the e-Naira and our fintechs. Ladies and gentlemen, it is pertinent to mention that the Inera Hackathon recorded a sizable interest from our young and innovative Nigerians with a total of 4,667 registrations comprising 4,082 male, 582 female applicants. This further corroborates the fact that Nigerians, both within and outside our country, possess innovative ideas and are willing and ready to leverage on exciting opportunities that the ENIRA presents for enhancing digital financial services and contributing to national development. The hackathon titled ENIRA Africa's Gateway to a Digital Economy aims to bring together teams of talented African entrepreneurs, developers, designers, solution developers, problem solvers, out-of-the-box thinkers and code magicians to develop innovative solutions that would drive increased adoption of the e-Nera. With 4,667 registrations, the event drew a sizable interest from young and innovative Nigerians, with 4,082 males and 582 female participants. 20 contestants advanced to the final round, from which 10 winners emerged. This growing interest in the e-Nera project confirmed that Nigerians both inside and outside the country have innovative ideas and are eager to capitalize on the exciting opportunities that the ENERA presents for improving digital financial services and contributing to national development. The CBN governor expressed confidence that the ENERA hackathon will unveil a pool of talents that would fuel the transformation of Nigeria into a world-class digital economy and beyond. From the presentations made over the course of this Inara Hackathon, I'm confident that it will unravel a pool of talents 
that will fulfill the transformation of Nigeria into a world-class digital economy and beyond. From an initial cohort of over 105 groups that made the quarterfinals and 75 teams that progressed to the semifinals, the hackathon has reached its climax today with 20 teams in the finals from which the top 10 would emerge as prize winners. At this juncture, please permit me to salute the various teams and their members that have worked day and night to painstakingly articulate their pitches and prototypes, particularly those present here at this final event. Congratulations on making it to this final stage of birthing innovative solutions for a modern Nigeria and the first step towards expanding the Central Bank of Nigeria's innovative financial ecosystem. Let me also use this medium to acknowledge the, the partnership and unwavering support of the Minister of Communications and Digital Economy through NITDA and the partnerships with the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs. I'd also like to commend the African FinTech Foundry and members of the Project Giant for their efforts in the successful organization of this hackathon project. Daniel Orr, Group Head African FinTech Foundry, a technical partner to the CBN, praised the Apex Banks for transitioning from a traditional regulator to a smart, innovative one in his remarks. I'm excited to be on this podium. I'm honored uh, to have partnered with um, Central Bank to organize the first ever hackathon by a regulator on the continent. Um, this is not a main fit, and um, I think we need to, to appreciate this because um, when we look at what Central Bank is doing in Nigeria, Central Bank has transformed from the traditional regulator to a smart and innovative regulator. Um, some few years back, um, I was fortunate to be part of the um, committee to work on the um, uh, vision PSV 2025. And one of these um, deliverables was CBN will be an innovative regulator. CBN will support the ecosystem. And I think we are achieving that and uh, it um, deserves a lot of respect. The hackathon, um, in a simple way, it's a platform that brings entrepreneurs, coders, developers, and um, product managers together to solve problems, to create use cases, to innovate, and build new business model. All over the world, there's always been a lot of um, discrepancy, a lot of divergence between innovators and regulators, for obvious reasons. The regulators look at all the aspects of innovation. They look at the impact on financial stability. They look at impact of the innovator, innovations on consumers. They look at it from risk perspective. While most innovators, most startups, they only see the opportunity in their ideas. And that has been a major problem globally. But we have a central bank that has moved a, a, a lot step further and say, you know what? We are ready to work with innovators. We are ready to work with problem solvers. From ground up, we are ready to create products that will transform our digital market. And with this, we think there's going to be a lot more new ideas that will create jobs, that will create employment, and bring in values into our financial services. At AFA, we are extremely honored to have worked on this um, hackathon with the leadership of um, Central Bank by Madam Rakia and her team. They've shown a lot of professionalism. They've shown so much passion. They've given support. And um, from over 5,000 applications, that is the highest you've ever seen in an hackathon on the continent. This number. This number has been trimmed down to 20 
what a very difficult task to bring five th over 5,000 applications to 20. But my message today goes to two set of people. Those that did not meet up to the final, I just want to tell them that um, winners, they don't quit. They have to continue and create solutions. They have to put in their passion and who knows. And also to the winner, um, to the top 20 today, um, I think we are bringing top 10. So for those that will not be in the top 10, I also want them to know that that doesn't mean uh, it's the end of the road for them. They need to do as much, they need to keep the work, they need to keep the fire burning. And for those that will be on the top 10, we want to come back here next year to see the impact they've created in terms of employment, the impact they've created in terms of value, the impact they've created in the increase of the adoption of eNaira. The likes of Google today, the likes of Microsoft, the likes of Facebook, the likes of uh, Amazon, where companies that started from ground zero like you all. And um, I want to believe this will build a new venture for the country. This will create a new value that will give us the, the, the opportunity that we're not going to get from oil and gas. And uh, on the final notes, I wish all the contestants, all the participants, all the best. And I'm very delighted that the audience will enjoy innovative and um, wonderful products. But before I leave, I think I need to also appreciate the partners um, that have supported this. Um, I would like to speak to MTN. Um, MTN was part of this innovation. They gave us um, APIs and services. Um, I also like to mention Access Bank and Sterling Bank, two innovative banks. They gave a full support to all the innovators. Then Global Accelerators, um, a top PTSPs, they also gave a wonderful support to in innovators. Then the NITDA was also a wonderful with Interstellar that offered a blockchain platform for the innovators. But I'm sure that this is financial inclusion by understanding the needs of the target audience. So it means that our challenge that we're addressing here is onboarding the unbanked. Onboarding the unbanked. So who are the unbanked? The unbanked are those who are not, you know, connected to the formal financial sector. Those who do not have bank accounts at all. And these are the people that we are trying to see how we can, they can have better adoption, be able to adopt the use of in-era, and then bring them into the financial sector. So that's what we want to do. Now, let's look at the size of the unbanked in Nigeria. It's estimated that um, there are about um, 36 million adults who are unbanked. And this represents about close to 40% of um, you know, the population of Nigerians that are unbanked. If you look at the sector um, of those that are unbanked, they contribute about over 50% to our GDP. Over Thank you, sir. Uh, but just one question. Yes, sir. Beyond the technology, you also need to think about the operations behind it. Yes, sir. So, you try to answer it, but I mean, you need to amplify it a little bit more. Okay. What happens when I send money to the wrong phone number? Very good, sir. Mm. So, like, if you send money to the wrong phone number, right, the person tries to, first of all, you have to validate twice. So, when you enter the first number, we'll return it back to you to enter it again to ensure that you're entering the right number. If you do it at that time, you're sending it to the wrong person. It's just the same way when you're buying your credits online. You have, in fact, when you're buying from most banks, you're only doing once. But we allow you to enter it twice to be sure. At that time, there's nothing we can really do there. But we are still exploring more ways to ensure that um, we help more people. So when we talk about commerce and trade, we know that there has to be a means of exchange for that to happen successfully. So um, now we have, we used to have um, calories and the whole lot of other things, trade by butter. But now we have currencies across different countries. In Nigeria, we use Naira. I'm moving on to digital currency. So in Mali, we'll be solving the problem of international remittance and FX exchange. We are all fully aware of the pain points with that as we speak. 
So talking about foreign direct investments, we've had a serious decline in foreign direct investments with high percentages and huge millions declining year in after year. And we started to notice this a lot in 2017. Um, looking at other use cases where um, we, we have a lot of truncated data, security issues, there's no trust in terms of um, international remittance and um, where we are even not at par, our currency is not at par or as much stability with other currencies abroad. So Imali will be solving um, this problem. Okay. I, I heard you speak to FDI, and I thought that was going to be a very unique opportunity for people who have e-Naira accounts, especially in diaspora, to make in-country investment while they have e-Naira channel. That would have been a great door opener. Well, speaking to that, I didn't hear you say anything in context or present anything in context to that. Maybe you're going to, partner, you're going to be partnering with the likes of um, SEC, um, stock exchange, because at the end of the day, you want Enera to consume value in Nigeria. But it just seems you're talking to um, remittance alone. All right, so thank you so much for that question. So that's also a very key proposition. Remember, I mentioned the decline we have in FDI, you know, since 2017. So um, what I'll just give you a typical scenario where an investor, right, visits the Nigerian government website and sees, maybe Kano State, sees all the available investments, right? Or probably wants to buy shares, ETC. Definitely, we're going to partner with those bodies such that you can have access to those investments directly. The government body would have their in-era uh, account, of course, and we would enable such transactions to come in seamlessly from wherever in the world and whichever investor. We are bringing two propositional values to the existing in-era app. We're not building a new app. The same Inara app you have, we want to add two things that will transform the experience for users. Now, the first thing that we are adding is the ability for merchants to be geolocated upon registration. So wherever you are, whatever platform you're using, whatever third-party app you're using that interacts with the Inara platform, as soon as you register, we know where your business address is and we plot it on the map. I'm going to demonstrate that. So that's the first part. The second part is that since we have this information, we should be able to transform this information to value for consumers. And as a result of that, we have this piece whereby consumers naturally look up merchants doing business in their vicinity who use the in-era. Unfortunately, that part doesn't work, so I can't demonstrate that to you. Now, the top thing, so the first part is the mapping part, and the second part of our proposition is the offline transactions. Now, we do know that Typically, network is not reliable, and you can never predict when things will happen. We've come up with the, the idea that you should be able to allot a portion of your total wallet balance to use for off 